Now at 6.30, only on WKYT This Morning, details on the arrests of two men in Ohio in connection with a Clark County murder. Details on a violent crash in Anderson County, a semi narrowly missed hitting a house. And how actor Johnny Depp's dogs, you know, he's the actor from Kentucky, how his dogs are getting him in trouble down under. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It's so nice to have you up and at it with us here on this Thursday. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Rebecca Smith. Can't wait to see that Johnny Depp story. Did you see him? I mean, he just does not quit, even with age. With that young model on his arm. Interesting. She was looking very, you know, yeah, well, la ti da. <laughs> the dog story should be interesting. And we have a lot of news this morning. We'll get to yeah, you in do. just a bit. But let's check in with meteorologist Micah Harris right now. Nice start to the morning out there. It really is. I don't see anything going on this morning in terms of any rain falling out of the sky. You won't see that. And until the next couple of days. First alert, Defender Live Radar, good clean sweep. There is uh, some energy back toward the west, and what that's going to do is push a warm front north of us today, which will leave us right there in the warm sector. What does that mean? Well, it will be much warmer in the days to come. We're at 46 now, Mountain Parkway, out toward the Slade community as you head toward Natural Bridge and also the uh, Gorge area. It's beautiful this morning, 79 by the afternoon. We're having a 30 degree swing. It is one of those mornings you'll have it on the warm side there, uh, heading off to work. And then you'll have it on the cool side heading back from uh, work to heading to home later on this afternoon with that AC in the car. So it's just one of those days, but still very nice. Humidity still down, but temperatures are getting warmer. Now that takes us off towards your weekend. So we'll be in the 80s. Humidity will be on the increase, and so will thunderstorms. How will that affect, affect your plans, and which day has the better shot? I'll show you all those answers coming up. All right, see you then. Here's the latest now from WKYT. We are beginning with a breaking news alert. Two men wanting a connection with a Clark County murder have been arrested in Columbus, Ohio. State police tell us it'll be a few days before the men are brought back to the bluegrass. WKYT broke the news this morning of the arrest of Christopher Coleman and Kirk Garrett. A SWAT team with the Columbus, Ohio Police Department captured them late last night. Police say Coleman, Garrett, and Don Attaway killed Roy Combs. Police found his body yesterday near a rock quarry in Columbus. Clark County. Coleman and Garrett also face an attempted murder charge because another person was hurt in this attack. Combs' family says they can't believe he's gone. I don't understand how anybody thinks that they have the right to take another person's life. It's hard. Not only did we lose our brother, but, you know, the people who did this, their family lost them too. Again, three people are now charged in Combs' death. Don Attaway was arrested yesterday, and just this morning, we learned that Christopher Coleman and Kirk Garrett have been arrested in Columbus, Ohio. We are also tracking some developing news this morning in Anderson County. A violent semi crash as part of Graffenburg Road blocked. WKOT's Victor Puente is there live for us this morning. Victor, do you know exactly how long uh, this will be an issue? We hear that really that road has been reopened. Is that right? Yeah, the road is now reopened. That happened about 45 minutes ago, but pieces of that truck are still in the yard behind me. Now, you can see that the engine is right here. Uh, there's a fuel tank and then metal ingots across the yard here. Crews were out here for about five hours clearing that truck out of this yard. Police say the driver was flown to UK hospital with non life threatening injuries. The cab of that truck was destroyed in the crash. They tell us he went off the road around midnight. The trailer was full of pieces of aluminum. Police say that metal shot forward when he hit that tree, coming out of the trailer into the back of the cab. It also spread across the yard. A cleanup of all this debris is expected to happen later today. Neighbors tell me they're keeping an eye on it, make sure no one comes to try to mess with this metal. Now, that truck came to a stop within a few feet of a home that's right here. Now, some pieces of that metal did strike the home, but no one else was injured. Live in Anderson County, Victor Puente, WKYT. All right, thanks so much, Victor. A vigil is planned for tonight to honor an Eastern Kentucky University student who died in a crash. 20 year old Alyssa Mormon died Tuesday night in a crash on Jacks Creek Road in Madison County. Three other EKU students were hurt. The vigil will be held tonight at 7 outside the Health Services Building on EKU's campus in Richmond. Mormon was a sophomore in the pre nursing program. 
The time is 6.34 here on WKYT, and we're learning more this morning about that murder-suicide in Hardin County that left an 11-year-old girl and her father dead. A close family friend says the girl was on the phone with her mother when she was shot and killed by her father. State police say the girl and her father, John Jonas, were found outside their Vine Grove home. Jonas was an Army Lieutenant Colonel at Fort Knox. The family friend says the girl's mother was too devastated to talk on camera. Found her last night, um, curled up in the bed, um, hugging Tasha's clothes. Um, as that's all she unfortunately has left of her child. The friend also says the girl was caught up in the middle of a custody battle. Police have not yet confirmed a motive for the shooting. Well, today, a serial robbery suspect he is headed to court to answer to more than a dozen charges. Lexington police say 35 year old Edward Hale Jr. was behind 15 robberies over a few months' time. And this morning, we are learning that he's also accused of intimidating a witness. W County's Mark Barber is live for us in Lexington. Mark, am I right to understand that the witness was involved in a murder case? Good morning, Rebecca. That's absolutely right. I've been going through court records this morning, and I've learned that not only is Edward Hale charged in more than a dozen robbery cases, he is also accused of beating a witness in a murder case. We picked up an arrest warrant this morning that states that Hale and two other people threatened to kill a woman last month because she is a witness in a November shooting death. Police say that the suspect in that case, Martavius Bell Jr., shot and killed 51 year old Stacy Lilly. The warrant states that on April 9th, the witness's attacker stopped her on 7th Street and asked her if she had visited Bell in jail yet. Then, court documents say that Hale dragged the woman and hit her in the head and her body. According to the warrant, Hale also implied that she would be killed because she was involved in the case. Hale is also a serial robbery suspect, facing 15 first degree robbery charges. According to court records, Hale robbed gas stations and restaurants across the city from January 21st through April 17th. Police say that the 35 year old had help in many cases, but told he worked with another man, Darnell Thomas Jr. Thomas was arrested back in March. Investigators say tips led them to arrest Hale yesterday. Now, court clerks tell me that Hale will be arraigned later today here in the district courthouse on several of those charges. I'm told seven charges. Charges of robbery and that intimidating a witness charge. I'm told that he will appear in court in circuit court on those remaining robbery charges sometime next week. Live in Lexington, Mark Barber, WKYT. Thanks so much, Mark. New this morning, a Southern Kentucky home is a total loss after an overnight fire. The Lincoln County Sheriff's Office says the vacant foreclosed home on Cedar Ridge Road off Highway 150 East caught fire at about 9:30 last night. A couple of months ago, police said they were told some people were making meth in that abandoned home. A state arson investigator will take a closer look at the scene this morning. Well. Uh, also, what do likely Kentucky voters think about Senator Rand Paul's run for President of the United States? The newest WKYT Herald Leader Bluegrass poll finds 26% of expected Republican voters in Kentucky would vote for him in the primary. Of course, uh, there's now talk of there being a caucus, not a primary in Kentucky for next year. Mike Huckabee and Jeb Bush are a distant second and third. If Senator Paul ends up running against Hillary Clinton for president, Kentucky voters are deeply divided. The poll finds each would have 45% of the vote as far as the support right now. You can find the complete Bluegrass poll results on WKYT.com. Well, the voice of a bunch of characters on The Simpsons says he's leaving the show. 71-year-old Harry Shearer has been with the show for all 26 seasons, starting in 1989. He provided the voices for neighbor Ned Flanders, Principal Skinner, Mr. Burns, his assistant Smithers, and many minor characters. Altogether, he's vo voiced more than 100 Springfield citizens. Shearer told CNN the dispute centers around his ability to continue doing outside work. Maybe a bit of a contract dispute there. Well, Australian authorities are telling actor Johnny Depp to either fly his two dogs out of the country or they will be put down. Right. The Agriculture Commissioner there is accusing Depp of smuggling his Yorkshire Terriers aboard his private jet in April to resume filming of the fifth installment in the Pirates of the Caribbean. Now Depp has been given a 72-hour notice to send his pets back to the United States. 
Oh, they're calling it Terrier Gate over there. Well, I can understand. I mean, it's, it's quite controversial. They're very situation. cute dogs. There's a petition. They've got more than a thousand signatures on it. So we'll see what happens. I mean, they have you know a bit of time to get the dogs out of there. I'm sure they could probably just fly them out of there back home. Well, we'll keep following up on that one. <laughs> and there's a lot of buzz surrounding a Lexington man's home. Well, that's because he's rescued and keeping thousands and thousands of bees. Greg Decker keeps the bees on the roof of his garage. He says he's trying to sustain the bee population in Lexington. He removes the bees from hives he finds in homes around the area. Just yesterday, he removed 30,000 bees from a historic home in Clark County. So this morning, we went to this 200-year-old uh, historic home in Clark County where the bees had made their way in through a joint in the brick. Well, we have bees. We have bees. Decker urges folks not to use spray on bees because they're important to the environment, of course, those bees. He also says that removing their uh, hives improperly can cause some major issues. And, you know, they say that these pesticides, some of them in some cases, according to some studies, they're actually attracted and get, you know, addicted to these pesticides that they're not supposed to be eating. So, yeah. uh, well, it's an interesting conundrum. Over in Louisville, uh, there was a situation with they now have bees on top of a restaurant over there. Remember oh, that yeah. was earlier yeah. in the week? So, uh, bees in the news this week. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see how traffic be on the roads this morning. Let's go to Officer Dodd and check on live drive traffic. Good one, Don, right? Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. No wrecks right now. I know now. you're jealous. Tra <laughs> Traffic looks okay in the circles. You're buzzing around town. I didn't do that. That's a Chris Bailey thing. What are we doing here? Anyway, we're buzzing around town this morning. No problems on the inner or outer loops. Uh, inbound Newtown Pike and North Broadway looks okay. Uh, and we get a live look at Broadway and High Street where we are collision free. It's a straight shot. On our Waze map so far, if you're coming in from Madison County through the construction, no major hassles just yet. We'll keep an eye on that today across the Clays Ferry Bridge. And all the X and ramps look good off the interstate. Now back to you. All right, good start to the day. You could hear uh, Deanne back there, a little cackle oh, in the background. Oh, yeah, we want to see her face. <laughs> so, Deanne and uh, Officer Don are on 98 <laughs> won the Bull, and they're having a good time when you get in your car this morning. We have a lot more news coming up for you on WKYT this Thursday morning. Blaze wants to make your summer snack experience as personal as possible. You've got to be quick to make it happen. We'll explain in about six minutes. And we're looking outside 50 degrees in Frankfurt. It is a really good looking day, but you slide in through the next few days off into your weekend. We're going to be tracking some thunderstorms, and I'll show you all that coming up next.